Hello friends, welcome to another video from Shomu's Biology. In this video, we are going to answer one of the burning questions of this time that is, is PhD worth doing in India? If you're wondering if PhD or doing PhD in India will really worth it for your future, for your career, then this video is just for you. Because in this video, I'm going to give you the straight ahead truth regarding doing PhD in India. So stay tuned and watch the video. While discussing about doing PhD in India, first I want to talk about the scenario of doing PhD in India right now in 2022 and then I'll talk about the final verdict whether you should choose doing PhD in India or not doing PhD in India. So the first thing is about the scenario of PhD in India. In India, the PhD programs offered by the recognized universities and colleges which are all legally providing a legal providers of PhD normal process of PhD goes something like your graduation in your masters and master equivalent candidates uh, go for their CSI net examination or gate or any other PhD entrance examination conducted by their respective institutes and once you qualify then only you'll be able to go there as a PhD scholar and the stipend that they provide you the, the payment the stipend that the salary you can expect from that for five years only and that is listing from 32,000 to 36,000 rupees which is a non-taxable income per month so this is what you get for five years so this is uh, the conventional approach so <clears throat> we Indians always think like a linear approach towards our education and linear basic approach goes something like graduation then masters then qualifying net or any other PhD entrance examination then doing PhD so that sounds uh, pretty straightforward right so this straightforward journey is taken by many people and actually it's PhD is being offered by many universities and colleges in India in past one decade the number of universities and colleges in India providing PhD degree is increased in three times number so earlier it was near about 3 350 312 in 2007 somewhere there and by the time 2020 it is more than 900 institutes and universities offering PhD program in India and while this huge number of universities and institutes are offering PhD uh, degrees but not very huge number of candidates are applying basically higher studies applicable for only 30 to 40 million people in India and among those 30 to 40 million people in India the people aiming for PhD is near about 1,60,000 to 1,80,000 people so among 36 million, we have 1,60,000 to 1,80,000 going for PhD. So not everyone is going for PhD. But again, if you think 1,60,000 to 1,80,000 people in India applying for PhD, it gives us huge number of PhD scholars and they are funded. Most of them are funded by the institute funding agencies like UGC, funding agencies like CSIR or the institutes that they are getting PhD from, they are being funded by them. Now what is the problem with this PhD program think about it huge number of students coming out huge num number of PhD holders are coming out every single year and the number is increasing day by day so as this huge number of students huge number of scholars are coming day by day after qualifying PhD degree they are remaining unemployable even after that because that's another statistics coming out that near about 2000 out of six, every 6,000 PhD degree holders are, are unrecruitable. So why this even PhD degree holders become unrecruitable? Because if you imagine the idea that if you do BSc, your chance of getting a job low, do MSc, getting a job little high, PhD more high. This concept is totally wrong. In India, this concept never applies. A person even after doing plus two, even do a little bit of a diploma courses can get good salary job and more recruitable than a person coming out as a PhD degree holder at the end of PhD completion. Yes, that's true for India. That's true for the Indian education sector. That's true for Indian industrial sector. Because in India, we fail to develop what is called as a manufacturing hub. We, we, we fail to develop that part. What India does at this moment best is to start with something which is already existing and uh, we simply take it forward. We have a blueprint and we repeatedly do the same work. And for re doing repeatedly the same work, we don't need innovation. We don't need new skills to be developed. What we need, we need someone who can follow instructions and can do the work. And manual labor is something which is related to that. So we can hire people who can simply follow some instructions, some SOPs and do, uh, can do the work. We don't need any innovation. We don't need someone to come up with a new idea. That's why these PhD holders are less recruitable in terms. 
so that is the current situation in india so once you understand the current situation in india now where do you fit in where do your phd degree fit in as a candidate as a student so now if you are in graduation if you are in masters then this is the perfect time for you to watch this video because what i'm going to say now may not be applicable for every single one of you may be applicable to some may some other uh, may find it difficult to digest so this video was this video in a point of view of understanding and also critical thinking so i want you to criticize the video in the comment section and write down what you think and what you feel regarding it because i'm going to give you both positive and negatives so the first thing is that whether you should choose an opt for phd the answer is it depends whether you choose yes or no now first let me tell you when you think to choose doing phd in india see doing phd in india if i ask you why do you want to do phd in india and most of the students will say like uh, i want to be a researcher or i want to uh, teach in colleges and universities as a uh, assistant professor among these two answers the second answer is right answer the first answer is wrong answer if you want to be a researcher if you want to become a researcher and do a research work throughout your career then doing phd in india will definitely suffice it will not suffice that particular aim of yours but if you want to become a professor assistant professor in universities in colleges in india and stick to that position then doing phd in india will worth it so here goes the simple answer go for phd in india if you want to become a research uh, if you want to become a lecturer not a researcher in india now if you want to become a lecturer then the same process master equivalent then qualifying uh, net examinations and then doing phd and in this case i would suggest you not to choose a very tough topic to do phd choose very simple easy topic which can be completed and finished by 3 to 5 3 to 4 years and you can write and complete everything by 5 years so 5 years gone the time is limited you get the degree you apply for the position of lecturer and you get the job now here comes a big challenge because even though you qualify phd even though you are ready to join a colleges or universities in fully tenured position as lecturer but in that case also the recruiters are not hiring every single one that competition is also rising because the number of phd holders are also rising every single year in india and as a result i can give you a simple statistics iits and isars in india get 250 applications for the position of one particular faculty so that's why because the the mass recruitment for phd holders are already done in the past 5 to 6 uh, years uh, if, if before 2020 if you consider 2015 to 2020 this past 5 years huge amount of recruitment is done in the field of uh, teaching positions in universities and colleges and we know that in india we don't have any short tenure position like 5 years 10 years 12 years not like that somebody gets the job it's done it's for their lifetime and that also disturbs the ecosystem of education system because once you get a job and you know that your job is going to stay forever you stop doing the right thing for the job you you decide that yeah i got the job so whether I, i i teach well i don't teach well doesn't matter i'll get the salary and that's what's happening that's why most of the students are not getting good teachers in the colleges and universities as well well although there is a big names coming in but still we yet to get good teachers and faculties and i get tens of comments every single day that the university teachers are not good they're not studying well although they got the job but they're not doing the job because of the fully tenured position so as a result of which again that same idea is not leaving any job opening so that new people can be recruited there so that's a big challenge that you will face so still if you want to do phd if you're doing phd right now make sure that do it completely faster take time uh, don't take much time and once it's finished you go for the job get the job as early as possible settle down that is the only option i can see after doing phd choose very easy simple topic not very difficult topic don't choose uh, the big name or universities to do your phd or big institutes to do your phd's choose somewhere where you can complete the phd on time now the second situation if you consider yourself as a researcher and if you want to see yourself as a researcher in future if you want to innovate something the research passion is in uh, inside of you in that case india is not a good option i will not say it's not uh, it's completely bad because obviously there will be excep- exceptions but in this case you need to move outside of india where uh, the research oriented work is done there are countries like uh, usa the european union countries and also russia is there japan is there these places 
people do phd and after doing phd there is no only simple academic position there are stand alone researcher positions always there in india we cannot produce we in this so many years of phd's existence in india we still cannot produce stand alone researcher jobs you cannot find someone who only do research work under any organization or under a, uh, any particular r and d division of a uh, uh, industrial sector you don't find it very very rare to find it so if you want to do research work you are doing it as a junior research fellow or as a senior research fellow or a research assistant and all these positions are temporary they are not permanent position neither grf nor srf nor research assistant positions so in this case there is a big gap so as a stand alone researcher you cannot survive in india you need to move outside of india and then you get something of your food that you want now come to the horrific part the 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 something that is really painful to see is that while i was making this video i was checking what is going on with my students what is going on with all those people who are doing phd in india and i search different internet sites i search quora and different places what i found is that in quora i don't find a single positive comment on doing phd in india well people are talking about so many things regarding doing phd in india including that the doing phd in india is bad for their health bad for their for their life work life balance and that is something which is true to some extent in india doing phd will consume a lot of your time and it consumes not only it consumes a lot of your time it also tests your patience and your energy because the work life balance will be destabilized and if you want to give me a score of work life balance to do phd in india it will be 1 out of 10 and uh, if i go less than that it's even you know it also depends and varies from lab to lab what kind of lab you are in what kind of principal investigator you are under but still in most of the cases the work life balance is not good because there is no fixed pattern of doing phd in india no fixed timings so you may have to work in saturdays and sundays you may have to work in at uh, 1 2 3 o'clock in the morning and you may need to uh, get uh, i mean work done whenever you get funding and whenever you get all the process going on and for getting proper funding for getting instrumentation and all these things you need to uh, do a lot of extra work extra paperwork and something which is not related to your research work at all so these things need to be done by many students many phd scholars in india and if you go there if you talk to them you'll find out the truth behind it although some of them will say that they are perfectly fit to the environment if you can per- be adjusted to the to the environment it's good for you otherwise it may be a very very dark and bad place for you to do phd in india now the positive side on the other hand is that in india we are in a growing uh, so so growing in the sense it's a developing country right and in the developing country the mindset is something that that is uh, working like a shackle here uh, like uh, this whole idea of research is working like a shackle and this idea is that if the mindset the whole mindset of india is working like a shackle uh, to this whole noble idea of doing research in india and in this case if this mindset is modified if it's changed and if we can make india or build india as a manufacturing hub where we need stand alone researchers stand alone research positions then the process the whole scenario will slowly start to transform and some people may say in this is india it takes 20 years 30 years 50 years and even 100 years for transforming yes it's true we've seen this earlier but we still can hope something good hope something better can come in the future times and there are many things change possible who know uh, who knew earlier that there will be a pandemic and the pandemic rechanged rethought uh, reshaped the world completely so it may happen in future also some changes some modification and that may lead to uh, the change in india uh, the policy that in india is is working with uh, the more research oriented innovative uh, product where we don't need only the copycats but we need someone who can uh, who can formulate the idea and principle based on which the whole process can work so based on all this idea we can stick to them and we can grow in india as a phd uh, career in india so keeping that in mind you can either skip phd in india or can continue doing phd in india so the final thought in simple words i can say if you want to do if you if you want to become a lecturer in university and college then obviously doing phd in india is a good choice but in that case do it faster do it do it, uh, do it fast don't go for 8 to 9 years or 10 years of phd don't go for that go for 4 to 5 years phd and then join as a, a lecturer 
and if you want to become a researcher in that case uh, if you are getting a job position in the phd try to finish it fast and go abroad complete post doctoral studies and try to get a job there or try to get a job in india and come back india come back to india and continue as a researcher but apart from that if you have time and if you think yourself uh, to not be able to balance with the uh, the phd life due to the work life imbalance problem and if you want to continue with the uh, corporate sector if you can handle people if you can talk with people if you uh, become a part of a team and work as a team member all this important qualification all the criteria if you have and you can try it you can try yourself as a uh, you know corporate employee for one or two years just to see whether you are fitting in if you can fit in then you can also continue that career otherwise go back to phd because the fellowship for phd i mean the age limit for phd is 33 years for general uh, 28 years for general male category 33 years for general female category so you can always have the time to go for that but rather than that stick to it so that's all about doing phd in india whether doing phd in india worth it or not if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to our channel to get more videos like that in future thank you bye